It's New Brew Thursday. Woo! And uh, today on the show, we are doing the fourth installment. Installment. Where there were three, now there is four. <laughs> of uh, Dr. Bill's cigar and beer pairings. Yes. So uh, we are doing Ballast Points Sea Monster, which is this one. And we're doing a beer um, that we didn't really plan on doing in the beginning, at least when we were filming the... Uh, the cigar, cigar and beer show, yeah. pairings, master pairings over at uh, Tobacco Barn. But uh, this is Abstract 05. It's from BrewDog. It's from their Abstract series, which is like a, it's an experimental series, more or less, that they do. Um, but yeah, but, James James is just like, oh, by the way, I have this really amazing, awesome beer that's kind of like James Sea Monster. Tobacco James from Tobacco Barn. Barn. Yeah. And uh, so he brought that out. And they were like, oh, hey, by the way, we're doing the show to match... <laughs> So, and he's like, oh, yeah, I got another one. Oh, Come by the house. Nice, nice. So I was like, here's here's another one. I'm like, yes. That's he was excellent. super cool. Yeah, and they're, super they're hard cool. to come by because when they go on sale, they go pretty quick. Um, yeah, there was only 3,600 bottles. I'm not sure of the number. But the, for the first people. There only 3,600 bottles. There's oh. only 2,600 <laughs> And this is 3,182 <laughs> of that bottle. One eighty two, boom. Yeah, so. this is like their very like you know small batch like super right. like wacky and out there like kind of series, right? I haven't had yeah. one of the abstracts yet. Well, so the I'm abstract 05 is a twelve and a half percent. It's got coconut, cacao. Um, they made some partnership agreements with some of the people that provided the coconut and the cacao to give them beer back, and so um, and apparently they lost quite a bit of the beer removing the coconut and the cacao. And so that was kind of shrinked, uh, shrinked the, uh, the yeah. actual yeah. Uh, batch size as well. But so who according to Jane, <laughs> exactly. Some <laughs> it's like man. <laughs> yeah. almond, almond Joy and Mounds in right. Scotland tasted really <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> so, um, but apparently this was James's favorite beer they've ever brewed. Is there coffee in it at all? I don't think so, but you'll probably get coffee notes off of the malt. And the, uh, the ballast Well, I know point. this is, yeah. This yeah. is, this coffee, is right? an imperial stout. So um, this one does not have coffee in it, but it, we'll get coffee notes off of it. Yeah, we will. You will. You better. You will that. get coffee notes. I off better, of it, right? Mister. Yes. If I'm eating tiramisu, and it, it sure is begging to be open. <laughs> tiramisu. Let's open it up. Let's open it. Okay, so this Shall is a ten percent, so it's a good one to start with. Um, and I know that because I just read the bottle, like you saw me doing. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to hide it. So you said ten percent and nine point five. No, twelve point five. Twelve point five. Yeah. Yeah, we got some so, monsters. Uh, yeah. Wow. And again, that's like, like a whenever... A sea monster, even. Oh! oh that no, just happened. Did. Oh, that just happened. That did. Um, Folks, you just witnessed magic happening. Golf right. clap. Golf yeah. clap. <laughs> well, no, it's actually funny because, like, you know, like I said last time, the first couple of beers, I was like, you know, levitation, cigars, you know, like imperial style. This is, yeah, this is the kind of beer that you think of when you're going to go for a cigar. It's yeah, the it's obvious right. one. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's why, I, but that's kind of why we did the levitation and why we did the Phantom was sure. to say, like, hey, you know... You would never normally think of this beer as a cigar beer, but guess what? It is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so guess what? Guess what? You, you just you got learned. What, you bitch. got school. Watch your world. Wow, that happened. Okay, so you need to quit drinking before we choose. <laughs> I, am, I will punch you in the face it. next week when, if you do that. Um, for all of you who just saw me smell it twice, <laughs> please ridicule him like ridicule crazy on, on Twitter and online. Yeah, just do it. And online. Thanks. What just all happened? Right. Anyway, let's cheers. Cheers <laughs> to Sea Monster Ballast Point. Colby, cheers. you're an amazing brewer. Yummy. Cheers. I'm still lost. What happened? I made a comment about him drinking the beer. He wasn't actually drinking the beer. He was just smelling it. Then he just called me out. That has happened. Blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Definitely and get a lot we're of coffee. All caught now we're caught up. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you that are experiencing deja vu, I apologize. But I <laughs> so. definitely get the coffee notes. Oh, the yeah. The smell. This is, I think, um, of the, like standard Imperial Russian stouts that you'll find on the shelf that are easy to, like, in our area, easy to get. Oh, yeah. uh, Ballast Point Sea Monster, I think, is probably in my top three. Hmm. I wouldn't yeah. just say, necessarily say it's easy to get in our area. Um, I don't think they make it year-round. It's a, it's a seasonal. It yeah, is, I yeah. mean, it's it's like one of those, like, one-shot seasonal releases. But right, well, when it's available, it's available it's throughout pretty, Southern California yeah, exactly. pretty it's easily. Pretty, it's pretty, yeah. There's yeah. a nice bottle again, shop, we'll have a few. Apologies yeah. to people that live in, I don't know, Vermont. Not Minnesota. Um, <laughs> Ballast Point actually, I think they, they still are, but I think they they started off as a homebrew shop, mm -hmm. and then they you know the homebrew shop. Let's make beer, and they then, also do spirits. 
Oh, they have, they didn't no, know they have a fantastic Bloody Mary mix, first of all. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, yeah I've seen yeah. that. Yeah. And they, they do do... Uh, they, they do do. do. They do. Um, they do do? <laughs> they do do. Uh, they, they also uh, do, I think it's a... Uh, is it rum? Or they do rum. And vodka. And right? vodka, yeah. yeah. No, they do gin, too. Gin, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, so I'm it's sure really... Vodka, it, I think it's cool because Dogfish Head also does that. I think yeah. it's cool that some of the craft breweries are kind of getting into the craft I was going to say about Dogfish, kind of but Dogfish Head is really good. <laughs> Um, yeah, like Rogue is actually another one. That's why you get the John oh. John because they have no, you're right. yeah. whiskey yeah. and then they yeah. age beers in those whiskey barrels. So, so I'm going to like what try it with this. We're, we're pairing this with tiramisu and if you've noticed lately that we've been doing a lot of dessert pairings, it's because I'm a fat man and enjoys eating dessert. So deal with it. Is that really why? No, it's not, not really why. But you get some chocolate. On this. <laughs> I was gonna say I get some like dark cocoa notes for sure. It's, really it's, cool. it's 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 like the coffee is like the biggest thing, but those like no dark chocolate notes. I don't get a lot of the coffee. I guess maybe almost slightly, but I get more of that sweeter. Um, the coffee for me chocolate. comes out mm. in the bitterness because I don't get a hot bitterness off of it. I think I get more of a coffee bitterness off of it. Well, I actually get more bitterness after the tiramisu. Yeah, it brings out the coffee coffee flavors. Without any food, it's like very well balanced. I think. Yeah. What do you, what flavors yeah. do you get off of it? It's nice and, it's 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 definitely bitter. Um, it, it's more bitter than it is. Okay, I guess it's a little off balance with the bitterness, but well, in a has, good way. It good definitely way. has like like you were saying more of like a roasty bitterness for me, you know, yeah. as opposed to like in like, like yeah, it's a not a hot bitterness, bitterness, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go for some of this tiramisu here. This tiramisu is delicious. This is just a standard store-bought tiramisu, so you don't have to get crazy with your tiramisu. You know. It's... Oh, if it's tiramisu, it is always crazy. <laughs> oh wow. Mm. I have a funny story about the, uh, the grocery store, but it's That's... kind of it, ha it has some religious overtones. So Prove I don't it. Want to tell it. But I'm sorry, that like is like drinking tiramisu and coffee. For me. Yeah. Like straight up, that's delicious. Yeah. Like this I wish is, I could do this in a restaurant. Yeah. Holy crap! <laughs> it's like really I want to bring my own bottle of Ballast Point Sea Monster to my favorite Italian restaurant. No, and have seriously. Tiramisu and yeah. I'm, I'm I'm gonna go to the owner and be like, look, try this, and he will be like, mm, see. Si. Yeah, see. See, play. But yeah, this is uh, this is a great pairing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I thought you'd bring something ch more chocolatey. So I was thinking that because um, you know it's kind of the no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. I was say, like the chocolate would be the, like the obvious one. And not I'm, to I'm call really Dr. Bill like... out, but he did <clears throat> fail to actually send me pairings this week. So I this is this was on my own. Yay, Stephen! Good job. So Hooray. far, so good. Um, I don't know how this. Well, I, you know what? I think it's actually going to work really well with this because I yeah, think the coconut, say, I the coconut the coconut's going to blow yeah. this up a little bit, yeah. but. Yeah. Before we do that, we're going to send you off to the beer and cigars because mm. I know that's really why you're watching this episode. So go watch that. Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairing with your host, Bill Sysak, known as Dr. Bill in the craft beer community. Uh, once again, I'm here at the Tobacco Barn in Lake Forest with uh, James, one of their cigar experts. Today we brought in Richard, their other cigar expert. So I thought we'd get, we have a big cigar, a lot of information I'd like to impart on this. Uh, it's the Liga Pravada T52. Right. I'm a huge fan of this tobacco. Um, I discovered them a little over a year ago, a little year and a half, and I just can't get enough of them. Uh, it's a fantastic cigar, and we are so excited to have this cigar at the Tobacco Barn. Um, it, it, they've done a lot of new things. I mean, Steve Sacco over at Drew Estate, and may, maybe you guys know of um, Acid Cigars. Um, Drew Estate also carries the Liga Pravada line, and this cigar in particular, the T52, they did something new, and um, well, it's not new. It's actually kind of a tribute to the old school. Yeah, with it's the, a little bit old with school. With the stock cut, you want to talk a little about the stock cut? Yeah, the stock cut is basically what they do. Instead of taking the leaf off um, off the stock, they actually cut it at the stock level. And so what they do is they actually hang the entire stock okay. in the barns. And uh, the way I sort of relate that is almost like a vine ripened tomato. You yeah. know, you get more nutrients going into the leaf. Uh, really just richens it up, and this is an awesome cigar. They really did a great job with this. This beautiful oily wrapper. I mean, this is just exceptional. So it, it, it's a big cigar. I wanted to have this as uh, you know. This is our fourth uh, part of our four-part series on ma master pairings, yeah, beer and cigars, and I, I think it's a great finisher. I think it's just a wonderful, amazing cigar. I, I, I couldn't agree more. 
And the, the way that we kind of um, set them up was so that we would kind of fish with this cigar and really get some of that spice, some of that tingle that you get yeah. in, your, in your, your palate. And then, you know, through the nose too. But I love this cigar. It has some spice. It's still well balanced. It's full bodied. And um, they did a great job. It, it's, it's a real good cigar. I like the size and everything. Of course, they have the Flying Pig, which right. you're a big fan yes, of, the and you, which you told me about. Um, and so we're excited to try this um, with the Birdie Broad. You know, I love that Drew Estate did this because the acid cigars are fun, mm. but some of the hardcore cigar aficionados kind of poo-poo them. You know, they go, ah, that's beginners. They're flavorful. They've got this infusion type technique. And so the best thing is when I break out a couple of these with those guys when they come over, and I go, yeah, I got some Drew Estate cigars you want them. And they're like, oh, really? And then if they don't know the Liga Privada, they're just eyes open and they just go, amazing. Wow, I didn't know they did cigars yeah. like this with this much intensity of flavor and this just an amazing cigar. Again, it's cool that you know the cigar industry is really thinking outside the box and they're, they're trying new things. Uh, you know, We talked a little about Pete Johnson doing that and he has some, a lineup of amazing cigars coming out. Um, can you think of any rich that are those guys that are coming out? coming out with those new cigars and um, kind of thinking outside the box? Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, like Drew Estate, Tatuaje, all really boutique, Alec Bradley, uh, yeah. Sam Lucia. Sam Lucia. Um, yeah. You know, that was an awesome cigar that he made. Uh, it's coming back. You know, all these boutique brands really coming out. <clears throat> it's really a tribute to sort of like uh, the boutique small, you know, small batch type deal. And it just, they just turn out really, really great product and yeah. just stuff that we could really enjoy. Awesome. It's quality. I think that consumers of cigars, it, it might be a new generation, but um, there's, a, there's an excitement in the air. Um, there's a lot of great makers coming out, and again, it's not just big companies, but um, they're actual people behind the companies that are stepping up and saying, you know, I made this product, and I stand behind it. Um, a, a lot like the, the beer community is doing right now, so. I think one thing. of the... Uh, the interesting things with the Liga Bravada line is they actually did, uh, was this uh, family owned crop fields for the tobacco? Yeah, yeah, this one in particular, I, I remember reading that. It was in Connecticut, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, the Connecticut Broadleaf as a wrapper, I mean, super oily, super rich, just really thick, um, thick, robust wrapper that just offers a lot of flavor. And they really just did a great job. Got to hand it off to them. Definitely. So big cocoa notes, coffee, rich, intense flavor. I thought it's time to break out an Imperial Stout. Awesome. So we have Ballast Point Sea Monster. It's a 10% Imperial Stout. You're going to pick up great coffee and chocolate notes here. I think it's going to interplay beautifully with the cigar. So let's do our traditional cheers and give it a shot. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, lovely, lovely Imperial Stout nose. You get the roasted malt, the roasted barley. Ah. A little bit of hops in here, or am I completely off? Well, Balch Point is a hoppy, uh, or known for their hoppy style beers. Right. There's a nice hop bill in there. You can pick that up a little bit. Uh, There's nothing on the back end, though. Yeah. It's not the predominant note. Yeah, but not at all. I, I was still surprised to get a little yeah. bit of that, that hop. It's well balanced. It's definitely got uh, great hops in it, but it's still that big Imperial Stout that you guys are looking for. Balch Point's out of San Diego. They just do some amazing beers. Yeah, they do Victory at Sea, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's killer. Yeah, I think it would, great. it would be great with the cigar as well. I think these notes in the cigar play beautifully with big roasted malts. So when you get into like Imperial Porters, Imperial Stouts, those big coffee type beers, mm -hmm. they play really well with this. And I'm, I'm picking up the nuances every time I take a sip. This has this unctuous flavor, this really mm -hmm. full flavor, and it just pay, plays beautifully yeah. with the uh, cigar and all these big coffee and chocolate notes. I, like I'm I getting, said. A, when you said coffee, that's exactly what I'm getting. I'm getting that uh, espresso, but not even just espresso, but just black coffee. Um, just, uh, you know, it's full flavored, um, but there's just this whole balancing act that's happening. Yeah. It's cool, I, I like it a lot. It's such a contrast too, to the bourbon barrels, yeah. um, which have that kind of sweeter finish. This one kind of sits and I get a little bit of that hop. Right. And I think that hop actually works better with this cigar. Yeah. This cigar and, and the spices of it um, definitely green's not the right word, but it has this, um, I don't know, maybe it's the stock cut method, but I, I get that kind of vegetable, wet grass type of um, flavors to it. It almost adds a, like you said, it imparts more nutrients, almost adds a freshness to the leaf kind freshness. of thing. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it just really comes it's out. It's definitely well fermented, no doubt. Yeah. 
but that 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 freshness, that slight vegetable. Um, yeah, it's good. What, what about through the ret retro hell? A lot of the spices still coming through. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of those winter spices start to shine through on this cigar when you, when you bring it in, and it's amazing. Huge, huge uh, nutmeg, uh, hints of cardamom, very, very subtle, but they come yeah. through in there, Woody. and you're getting all that woodiness, that yeah. kind of rich feeling like, like you a know. cigar. I want to be sitting. <laughs> I want a cigar to I want yeah. well, I, yeah, I want to be sitting in a big leather chair yes, right now. Exactly. I just feel yeah. like it. I've got yeah. the beautiful wood grain behind me. I feel like yeah. I should be sitting in that rich leather chair, fire going in front. Yes. And it's just amazing. Yeah. So yes. this is a great uh, winter time cigar, you know, when you're cold, yeah. come sit down, have that cigar, the Fireplace, spirit. Fair I spirit think it'll be wonderful. Another bound books. So yep. Uh, I didn't get to point this out before, but with beer for me, I think of cigars first, beer second. Not all, not all the time. If there's a beer that I really well, want to Well, you do work at Tobacco uh, Barn. That's, that's true. Um, but I tend to like getting um, cigars that have a bigger ring gauge because I want volume of smoke to kind of fill the room, to give me those, those aromas. Yeah. And even though I personally enjoy smaller ring gauge cigars because I love the wrapper. I want to get right. the, the most wrapper, the most right. ex expensive part of the cigar. Right. Um, the best ratio, and so I like smaller ring gauge cigars. But for pairing for things, I like bigger ring gauges because of the just the, 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 volume, the volume that you pull and the through. sensitivity to my palate. I don't right. want to burn my palate. I don't yeah. want any heat on my palate. And that bigger ring gauge actually helps out with that. You're absolutely right because the wrapper being the most expensive because that's what needs to be the beautiful part of the cigar that people see and that gives a lot of imparts a lot of flavor. Absolutely. The smaller the ring gauge, the higher percentage of wrapper you're going to get in the overall smoke. So guys, this Liga Pravada is so fabulous and intense. It's a killer smoke. I thought we'd bring in an yeah. extra beer. And yeah. so I have uh, compliments of James, a Brewdog beer. It's abstract number five. It's a special series they do. Um, I think they're up to six now, mm. but they do a different beer every time and just call it abstract one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And this is a specialty beer from Brewdog out of Scotland. Uh, James, a very close friend of mine, and Martin Dickey is head brewer. They started Brewdog quite a few years back and they call themselves the Punk Brewery and they do big, aggressive beers. And I think this is really fun. One of the things they do is use these black corks though. So even though it's crowned and corked, it's not an easy removal. So there we go. So they like to mess with you. So they got this tight cork. There we go, beautiful. So let's give this sucker a shot. Another big Imperial Stout, but I think you're gonna get different nuances from this compared to the uh, um, the sea yeah. monster, the sea monster from Ballast Point. Well, this one's, uh, you know, what really intrigued me about this beer was the toasted coconut. I thought it was really cool. Toasted coconut, and it was um, cocoa nibs as well. Have you have you had this one before? I haven't, so I'm excited about this. I've had the other ones, but I have not had this one yet. Oh, yeah, rich. definitely big, yeah, rich, 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 rich. Really, rich. Really good. I'm not picking a lot All of All right, the, well, let's cheers, because I almost took a sip, cheers. broke my own rule first. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. cheers. You don't get coconut in the nose, but oh my goodness, it hits you. Oh, this yeah. big, rich sweetness yeah. comes through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Delicious. I'm very it, excited this to try it. This to me reminds this. me of like a chocolate bar commercial, when there's just <laughs> seas and seas of, of, of chocolate, and you see the guy surfing on it. This is just, it's that big, it's that rich, and it has that much flavor just all around. Yeah, definitely. We'll see how the cigar holds up to it. I think quite nicely, I'll let you gentlemen be the judge, but I gotta say, I was probably, I was a little worried at first. I mean, the richness off of this mm. is amazing, but I think it pairs pretty nicely. It's a, it's a little heavy on the beer end, but I yeah. mean, it my, still holds its own. My palate is pretty saturated with just the, um, the sweetness. Mm -hmm. And it's not really even a burnt sweetness. It, right. I still get that, that chocolate. It, it's oh, cool, yeah. but, but through the nose, it's a great experience. Right. You're putting these two together and it just, it feels natural. You get this uh, mouth covering, palate covering sweetness that comes mm. through from the beer, but then the cigar kind of just plays right over the top of it. Right. And you, and you get, brings out more of the spices, a lot of, less of the uh, coffee and chocolate come out of the cigar and you get some of those other spices that come through and plays really well with this and is really enjoyable. 
And I think even more so now, I noticed that little, that farm freshness that you were talking about in the cigar. I mean, farm that really brings it out. Yeah. That's the best way to put it, farm freshness. Yeah. James, we're just about finished, but take a second and tell them a little about Tobacco Barn. You guys have a website? We do, uh, it's tobaccobarn.com. And uh, we sell pipes, pipe tobacco, a lot of pipe tobacco. Actually, we do in-house blending. It's something that we've done for many, many years. And um, it's a great place to hang out. We have a beautiful lounge here in Lake Forest, California. And it's just a great bunch of guys. And um, you could, Sorry to interrupt, but you guys do a lot of cigar events. You do them off-site and on-site, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, you know, I, I'm the event coordinator also. And I love, love, love getting together with a bunch of guys smoking cigars. Um, there's no, nothing really beats that. And then you throw beers in the mix. And we also do scotch. Uh, we just did one with um, a full Jack Daniels flight, Gentleman Jack and um, Single Barrel, which was a blast. It was a lot of fun, a great dinner. And, um, you know, like beer, it's just, it's enjoying life. I mean, not to be sentimental about it at all, but you can't take a shot of a cigar. It's something that you need time. Right. You need to um, actually sit down and um, relax and, and, and smoke the whole cigar. And if that's with company or, or great company, all the better. The same thing with beer. Well, I, I have a saying and it's every beverage that's good enough to drink is good enough to sip. And that mm. goes, holds yeah. true with the cigar. You can have a little cigar if, you, if you're like on your lunch break, but this is a cigar for savoring and relaxing. Sure. I think you guys are doing a great job here. I want to appreciate, I really appreciate, I don't, don't not only want to, but I really appreciate you guys having us here. I think you guys are doing a great job. I highly recommend you coming out to the Tobacco Barn if you're at all in the Southern California area. And uh, cheers, gentlemen. Thank you so much for cheers. having Thank us you. here today. Thanks for watching another great Master Pairings. Cheers. Hey everyone, here's another tip for you when it comes to uh, selecting and smoking a cigar. I have, today I have Chelsea from the Tobacco Barn. She's one of our experts. So I use a guillotine a lot, but I have one of these things. Can you tell us a little bit about this? This is a punch cutter or more fondly known as a bullet cut. And this is good if you have kind of a larger cigar or a smaller cigar and you don't want to use a straight cut. It really pronounces the flavor a lot more if you do use a punch cut. So what you want to do is you want to take the circle, place it on the top center of the cigar, and just slightly twist like that. And what that does is it puts a small hole in the cigar there, and that uh, you get more flavor out of it. So larger size cigars, they have things called ring gauges. Ring gauges, the higher the number, the wider the width, correct? The, that, that is correct. A larger ring gauge would be a little bit fatter of a cigar, for which there are also different sizes of punch cutters. Have you cleared the cigar smoke out of your living room? <coughs> <coughs> no, it's actually, I, 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 again, I like that place because the fans. The fans really kept it, like, if well, you're not, like, sitting in there not being a cigar smoker, like, it totally wasn't uncomfortable for yeah, me. Yeah, if you watch the show and pay attention, the smoke, as soon as they blow it out, it immediately, like, goes in the air uh, and goes away. That's awesome. It's not like it lingers and it's right. floating. Yeah, it's right, gone. Yeah. So. Plus, it's cool because you and can they, go there they and you can... they fly, like, remote control planes in the... Yeah. Place. Oh, one, nice. One guy. Yeah. Oh, it's, not like, it's not like they have a remote like, control. Uh, <laughs> you, can't yeah, you can't rent one. You can't rent one. They're like buzzing you. It's <laughs> like, whoa. whoa. Are they whoa. The, the ones on the string that just... No, it was like a full-on remote control plane just flying through the place. Wow. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> but, I mean, basically, it's just a cool, chill place to vibe. And like, you know, you just it's like 100 in screen watching golf. I don't, I don't, golf is I think whatever. they had a... Uh, uh, oh, shoot. I forgot the band. It was cool. It was an 80s band, though. Judas Priest? Oh, they're 70s, 80s. 70s, 80s, yeah. No, anyway, was Jesus Priest. So, yeah. as they did in the show, and we popped out the abstract, the in the master pairings, they packed up the abstract 05. We are also going to pop it out right now. And I'm going to open this. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm the one that had to walk up three flights of stairs to get it, but what else? Oh, Four, Steve. Steve. Five, up his brew dog. Six, seven. Yeah, eight, brew dog does nine. not care about no, Steve, any of the standards. Wow. Steve is a Steve is a cork raper. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Did you I'd like to it like more? Just pull it off. I'd you like to point out that. the uh, the black cork here. I mean, how many times have you seen that? Okay. It's not it's um, not often that you see a non cork color. Oh, cork. it's like all slippery. Now I, I feel right. like I have to do this now because I challenged you. And wait, can I? Do oh, this? Brian wants to try. It's the cork. It's a rubber cork challenge. Ooh. I feel like Brad has more. This beer like is going wrist to like and hand strength. Splatter all over I won't, someone. Like speculate as to why he does. Because of this cork but... battle. 
My right hand's stronger than my left. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it hasn't budged. Yeah. No, not at all. Here, here, come on, come on. Go ahead. Let me try. This is like this is like the uh, strong like the the hammer wow. thing at the fair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's so All, much testosterone once, in this room. Once one of your buddies does it, all the rest of your exactly. buddies gotta do it. You know. Are you turning it? No, you're no. Not. no, you know what it is? It's one of these things hey, where I'm in a buzz like, more than y'all. No, I gotta it's say, like, it's there's like, like a couple Arthur's million. Sword, <laughs> and I think we'd probably have to have like a woman on the show in order to open it up. You did get a little bit, I'll give you that. You got one millimeter. I win! <laughs> nice. I win! I loosened no, it up. No, I gotta get two millimeters. I loosened it up. That's no, not the, the only that, one that, millimeter that you have to, that, you have to bang it on the uh, you have to bang it on the side of a table to loosen it up. Yeah, this is a, actually like a rubberized. I don't know if it's yeah. rubber, but it's a rubbery type cork. It's not. It's not cork, a cork, cork that like not gives you any anymore. grip. You know. This is a real pain. But so uh, we're gonna send you off to like another master pairings while we try to open this. <laughs> well, have you guys? Speaking of like cool smoke yeah, that just gets yeah, sucked yeah, away. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen like those air walls when there's like a smoking section in a restaurant? And there's like a vent here and a vent here, and as smoke gets towards the non-smoke section, it goes. Yeah, and like, I have not seen that. There's that just like this really wall, cool yeah. and you can't get any smoke through it. <laughs> that sounds even awesome. if you try. It's you're like really awesome. <laughs> so cheers to Brewdog cheers and an mm. amazing beer that I can say that because I've had it before. Oh yeah, uh, oh, you get crap. a lot more fusel notes off of the nose on this. A lot. Which is, but you also which get, is a typical bit, for you get a little bit of smokiness on it. I get a little mm -hmm. bit of smoke. I'm actually getting some like dark fruit kind of character, like mm -hmm. almost like a figgy. Figgy. Yeah. You know what I get off of this is uh, almost like a s'more that's been in the campfire for too long. I've I've never made s'mores, so mm. I wouldn't know. You were a freaking Boy Scout and an Eagle Scout. How do you not make s'mores? Yeah, You're what? an Eagle Scout, really? Yeah. Right on. Thank you. That's no. so weird. Never made s'mores. Alright. You're too busy building the so, fire intending to. <laughs> on the next episode of Never Thursday, we're Saving taking Matt lives. out of the state of California and we're gonna go somewhere to make s'mores. Master pairings. Master pairings. <laughs> we okay. have to like Seriously, go, we have to do a s'mores master pairing now. Don't we, eat yet. We have to go like right over the border to like Arizona or something like that. We're not going to Arizona. You know, so the only state you've been to is Nevada? No, I've been to Nevada, I've been to DC, and I've been to Actually, you know what? No, that's not true. Because um I've been to, I went on a cruise to Alaska, and so I did a lot of like Pacific Northwest. So yeah, more times. More going by it in a boat does not count as being in that state. No, we spent a couple days in Seattle. Okay. Uh, went to that's Browers like driving Cafe. by a building and checking into it on Foursquare. No, that's like. You're not really there. It's like <laughs> being in an airport in a layover and then going Right, to exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, I was in Chicago because well, no, I was there no, for an no, hour. We, in the we spent enough time in Seattle for me to go to Browers and Bottle Works, which was right awesome. On. Yes. Yeah. And um, Browers spent. Is really nice. Dude, yeah, and we spent some time in uh, Vancouver and then Victoria. Vancouver, cool town. Victoria, cool town. Victoria, no good beer. No, Vancouver's got good beer though. Yeah, I missed out. We were there for like an evening, you know. Yeah, so we like great went up Chinatown this, too. Yeah, we like went right up the strip from our hotel, and there was you know yeah. a whole lot. But yeah, no, Victoria. It's very British, and so there were lots of you know really multi pale ales that were all diacetyl bombs. It's like mmm oh. butter, mmm butter, mmm Guinness, you know, and that was it. <laughs> Sorry, Victoria. Oh God, I love no, that. No, love it. Anyway, like, um, <laughs> so uh, yes, let's try this. Yes, this let's, is great. It's definitely got that like kind of saltiness that James is a fan of, I think. Yeah. Mm. It is salty. Yeah. Yeah. This reminds me of like wow. th actually this like this reminds chocolate. me of ta tactical nuclear penguin. Tactical. Nuclear tactical penguin? nuclear nuclear. It's pronounced nuclear. <laughs> George Bush. Penguin. Um but like in half. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's not as well, everything's kind of brought down a notch. <laughs> Can we eat? No. Ma yeah. yeah. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe everything but the smoke character, because TNP is a smoke bomb. Right. No, but I mean, you do get smoke off of this, though. Or a at least bit. I do. Yeah, no, I, I just do. said. Yeah, but I wouldn't say it's half of TNP. It's very subtle on this. They should get more. Maybe a quarter. Yeah, it's like a quarter. It's like it's TNP. I wouldn't even say a quarter. I'd say. It's I like think. An eighth. Okay. You know I mean? Despite the current fraction that is used to determine this no, beer's relevance to technically Sem yeah. semantic, my point, the hold point, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. If you've ever had TNP, it's a lot of smoke. So right, for, right. You it's say this is a quarter of that smokiness. Right. It's okay, not, I, I get your point. It's less than a quarter. The point Try that I'm with trying to make is that for people that don't like TNP oh. because of the fact that it's too <laughs> fusel, too smoky, too whatever, this is a beer that you could drink where you get the tasting notes of TMP 
without the massive like mm. uh, attack of TMP. Attack of the smoke. Yeah, like this. This is a Tomahawk cruise missile versus a nuclear bomb. Well, I can see why James says this is his, you know, favorite beer because mm. he loves TMP, but it it's not as ex- it's like I guess. I don't know. It's it's a better it's not balanced as extreme. beer. Yeah, right. it's not like a alcohol. It's not like a hard <laughs> alcohol. TMP beer. is really smoky, really, uh, well, really smoky, really fusel, really hot. Right. You know. Yeah. And very hot. you know. And of course, you're getting coconut off this that you're not getting. I'm off not of. getting the coconut. Are you getting that? Yeah, I'm totally getting. It's the, the sweetness. I think you're getting. I'm getting. Um, I'm getting hints, but I'm not. You know, either it's, it's, it's the cake. It's, the cake brings the coconut out. Yeah, I was gonna say it brings right. out the smoke. But it's not like Maui, like kind no, of like coconut no. level. No, hand toasted. <laughs> but I definitely get a lot more of the coconut off of it with the tiramisu. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, now that you put it in my brain. <laughs> now that I've implanted it, I'm, that's an inception right there, which yeah. just happened. I think for this, it overpowers the tiramisu a lot. Mm. Um, really? Little, yeah. It, well, I think it The Sea Monster works better with this than this does. This is a bigger beer. Mm-hmm. I do agree with that, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's coming off... I would like to try this think, with a cigar. Yeah, yeah I, I think what, sure, I think sure, what yeah. happens with the tiramisu in this beer is that the tiramisu, you lose the flavor of the tiramisu, but it sweetens the beer up, and it kind of brings out more of the sweet notes of the beer. I can versus, see that. Yeah. So I see what you're saying, though. It does overpower the actual flavor of the tiramisu. I'm actually surprised at how bitter this is. Like, it has, like, some pretty serious, like, like you know, IBU, not even necessarily right. roasty bitter. Well, I mean, you know? BrewDog, five, yeah, right? if BrewDog is anything, they are a hot bunch of hopheads. Oh, yeah. And so I mean, I'm sure the IBUs on this are pretty high. You can tell that it's coconut in it though, because it has no head retention at all. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Coconut, the oils in the coconut totally kill the. But head. it does have carbonation. It does. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, actually, um, it's, it's actually pretty lively. Yeah, like yeah. the carbonation is, you know. Well, and that's one of the things that the they say about this beer is that the the like the over carbonation of it cuts through the density of the stout. And yeah, kind I don't, of brings it up a little bit. I think it would be way too heavy if it wasn't as right. carbonated as it is. So if another what brewery made this and it wasn't carbonated, yeah, it would totally just be like, okay, now I just have this like thickness in my yeah. mouth that I can't get rid of. So, but anyway, good job. Um, yeah, yeah, well done, good. Colby. Yeah. Sea Monster is amazing, and if you can get your hands like, if you're See, in the San Diego area during like an event or whatever, and you can find like their like vanilla version or their coffee like their coffee oh, yeah, version, the, the cask version or the cask versions yeah. like. They do so many different versions of the the sea monster that are just like, oh my god, I'm having an orgasm in my mouth. Didn't they have like a hot pepper version too? Like a Chipotle yeah, that I did version? not like. Oh, <laughs> so I do not speak of it. Oh well. Yeah, we'll but just teach their own. It yeah, for bringing up an old wound. <laughs> <laughs> teach their own, I guess. Uh, but yes. James Brewdog, well done. Abstract 0- 05 Very is good. amazing. Abstract 06 also amazing. That's a hot bomb. To be it's sure, a, like an imperial it's a black crazy triple IPA. Black We're gonna IPA. have that next, but you won't see that. <laughs> <laughs> Suckers. Uh, Actually, nice. you might. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, I've got several bottles. <laughs> so, uh, but as always, until next week, stay safe and drink beer. Yeah.